Okay, we're live. All right. Um, Avery just sent me a message. He wanted to know, hey, this uh, this 1915S, he's got, uh, he shows me this coin on eBay. Let's see if we can find it. Scope, screen. He says, is this the grade? Is this XF? Okay, let's go over and have a look at this thing. It's on eBay right now, if I can find the darn thing. Is that it? Okay, I had to do a search. Easy enough. And we come up with this coin. Ready? And he wants to know if it's XF. Well, I'm looking at this thing, and uh, for the most part, the details are pretty good. Let me see if you can see what I'm seeing here. Let me move this down. Oh, hell, I don't know. Screen and me. There, I can, I can point. Okay. That works. I'm just throwing this together real quick. Okay, so he's got this 1915S. Wants to know, you know, what kind of grade would you give this? Well, first off, you get some pretty significant scrapes and scars on the thing, right? Let me scroll down just a little bit. And we look at the back. We got a, well, I got this line over here uh, going from the E in states going northeast. That looks more like a piece of lint. Okay, but I got a lot of. Uh, this corrosion all around the bottom and around the rim. Okay, but I'm looking at the, uh, I was looking at the wheat lines. They're pretty good. Sometimes you get some weak uh, berries over there on the left. Over here on the right, they look about right. Okay, uh, get a big ding here at 2 o'clock. All right, I go back and look at the front, you know, and then I see VDB. Well, what's it doing with the VDB in the shoulder? Let's see if you can... Which way do I point? Let me find out. Um, yeah, right. This I got to point to my right, but the coin is actually on my left. Okay. Uh, I'm looking at this thing, and there's a VDB just below his shoulder. So I take a good hard look. Now there's different ways you can do this. You can click on the image, and it'll open it in a new window for you. So you get the whole darn thing, nice and big, right here. There we go. And there's that same coin blow it up and let's see if I can move this over here just a bit this might work I don't know if you can actually see it I gotta point this way now okay that's my mouse hand and I got a point over here okay how do I I got an idea let's go back to the home screen and look at it this way there's all kinds of stuff I can do there. There's a camera taking a picture of a camera. I think. Bear with me. We're going to make this baby work. All right. Okay. I think we got it. Ready? I did my hair today. It's looking really good. Okay. Let's have a look at this. We'll get over to, uh, Let's see, we'll get this out of the way. All right. Here's the close-up. Now, here's what you're going to look at. Where's my pointy thing? Right here beside the one on both sides. You got some damage here. I don't know what this is. Who knows what caused it. But this here is very similar to this here. Um, how do you do this kind of damage across this much space and you don't frig up the letters themselves? Well, actually, they did frig up the letters. You can see at the top and in the center... What used to be a four, they scraped it out. This is a 1915 S being sold. Well, it's not. This is not the 1915 S mint mark. These mint marks changed in style. Uh, you know, they run it for a few years, changed that style of mint mark. That's not the 1915 S. That's a different S. This is a 1945. So it doesn't really matter what the grade is because now it's a damaged coin. And uh, what's the bid on that right now? Let's find out. 1950 is this one. Uh, $1.80. So you get VET. Of all people, I've bought many things from VET. Uh, has this uh, 1915. I've made this mistake too. Okay. Well, you know, you spend 20 bucks on the coin and it's worth 10 cents. Not even that if it's damaged. Well, here's one right now. Now I've done other videos where they, here's a, uh, if it'll load, give me a minute. Okay. Oh, that's me. Okay, that's alive. Well, there's Beth, Dana, Sparrow, Marty, Jonathan Raymond. Yeah, I found this uh, found this coin a guy wanted me to look at, so I 
came and looked at it. But I got another video. It's about a fake 1914D. Right? I got another video about a fake 1909S. There you go. I don't like to point at it, but now, now we got a fake 19, where'd it go? 1915S. So we'll add that to the repertoire. Here's what you're looking at, right? The style of mint mark. Now you can go to Variety Vista. Here it is. Here's their homepage. VarietyVista.com. I'll just post that link. Let me copy that. Go back to the chat. See, it's in the page file of the computer memory, so it takes a moment to reload. There's Variety Vista. Okay. Now, on the Variety Vista site, and I've already got the pages open, you can scroll down just a bit. You go to Lincoln Sense, where they have their double die li double dies listed. Okay, that'll give you this page. Lincoln Sense double dies, 1958. And here you have the design varieties. This, this is the doorway in. Uh, you can also, you know, just bookmark the thing, but it'll bring you to this page. And you've got obverse and wheat reverse, which shows you this. This is the obverse designs. All right. And you see over the years, they make subtle changes. I mean, they're not, they're not redoing all of Lincoln. They're changing, oh, his color detail, for example, on the 1915. They're changing and adding this little bit right right here uh, to the uh, to the next year. All right. A few years later, they enhanced this bow tie a bit. OK. After that, what they do? Redesign the front vest from top to bottom. OK. That was a big change there. But that was just 1920. Um, then they put a flat foot. On the G one year. I mean, they're, it's just little subtle changes that they're putting in. One of the big changes, however, okay, and the reverse design really didn't change a whole lot. Most of it's 1909 where they had this uh, shallow end or the deep cut end. So if you if you collect, you know, 1909 VDBs, well, now you got to have two of them because you got to have the shallow, you know, the type one and the uh, deep cut type two. Aren't you glad now? You got to get like twice as many coins. Well, anyway, here's that 15S. And we can take a look at, I mean, the mint mark. Let's start with that. Okay, where'd we go? Let's go back to Variety Vista. Um, mint mark styles. And we'll open that up in a new tab. This will take a moment. It'll probably start lagging. Okay, but I got Philadelphia. Doesn't have any mint marks. Denver and San Francisco. And that's what we want is a San Francisco. Because that early S, right? This had the same S right there used from 1909 to 1916. So if you get a 1915 cent S, that mint mark better look like that. Which, is that it? Yeah. That don't match. This is garbage. This is a 10 cent. This is this is a, a one cent coin being sold for two bucks by a, a pretty reputable seller. Okay, where'd that go? We've got to find those S mint marks again. Nope. 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 Yup. Okay. So you look for, if it's uh, in better condition, <coughs> excuse me, usually around fine, uh, the wear on the coin starts to take away this little notch up here in the corner. Okay. But above fine, um, very fine XF, you know, AUs, you're going to see that little notch. It's just a little cut in the top of that mint mark. So if you don't have that, well, if your coin's very worn, you can probably get away with it. But still, the mint mark needs to look like that and not like this. Let's have a look at this and compare it to 1945. Where'd that page go? Okay, scroll forward. 1944, 1945, you have the ball serif mint mark with a, with a flat spot on the lower ball. Okay, that's not a problem. And you have, where's the other one? I had a couple of them this year. Okay, the trumpet tail, which is this guy right here. All right. And so you compare this guy and that guy because they had two mint mark designs used in 45. So now you got to have two 1909S, you know, VDBs, and you got to have, you know, two 1945s to get that complete set. But we'll compare what he's got. This guy got a bit of a trumpet tail. It's kind of squished flat. Okay, so that's actually a, uh, where is it? That's this one, and I'd suggest it was also... Uh, punched rather deeply, which makes the mint mark kind of big, and then cut, kind of smushed over time. Yeah, that's the one. Where'd it go? That's the trumpet tail. 1945. They made it 41, 42, and 43, they had you know, a different one. 
because 1943 was different. In 1944, they used the, the bronze shell cases. And then they came back to the first design from 45 to 52. They changed it again later, but that's what it should look like is right there. And, uh, you know, various depths, you know, they punched it too hard. Maybe it's a little lighter. Uh, and then, of course, figure in for wear. But uh, I don't look like this mint mark looks nothing at all like that mint mark, which would be appropriate for a 1915S. Okay, where'd my picture go? All right. You can see here, that's been nubbed. That's been, you know, chiseled off. Shit. I, okay, well, I got a regular one, but I got to change the camera around to show you. Let's see. I got it. Here's a scope. All right, here's a 1945. I just happen to have lying around. Let's have a look at that date. 1945S. And there's your handy mint mark. Pretty darn similar to this handy mint mark over here. Let me zoom in even more. And are you seeing this? Let me see what you're seeing. Um, you're seeing that. And I want to see. Now, I can't go to home. Yeah, I can't show you that. How am I going to do this? Because I want to show you the scope beside. See, I'd have to take the scope off and then open it in another window so I could do it side by side. Okay. All right. We'll just fake it. Here's that one. And uh, where's the screen? Well, anyway. Screen? No. I'm not really ready. I'm just throwing this together as I go. Okay. This mint mark is... Uh, is genuine here. This is a 1945. This is genuine. You can look at the design on the five, the shape of the five, right? And compare that to, where's the screen? To this guy right here. Lost it. You compare the shape of the five because the five itself is a little more narrow and squishier. Uh, the five has been altered. The four has been altered. The one, you can see it's a bit off center between the nine and the five. A regular uh, 1915, the one would be centered. And this one is, uh, this one's just no good. I got to send him a letter because I got so much stuff from him. Yep. And over here, now in 1909, they started making these things. I had the VDB on the back. Uh, people didn't know what it was. I got frustrated and wrote harsh letters and they took it off. Now in 1918, they put it back on. They put it right here under the shoulder. VDB. So let's look at a real one. How do we do that? Uh, scope. And I'm going to move that around. We have, ready, ta-da, VDB. You can't miss it. You know what you're looking for. I need a pointy stick. I cleaned off my desk, so I threw out away, you know, like 16 toothpicks. Okay. Let's see if we can point to this just right. Move that over to me. Right in here, VDB, Victor David Brenner. That's all that is. And uh, over time, you know, you get some wear on there. But boy, that's a hard one to hide. If you've got VDB on the front, under the shoulder, it must, must, that's a rule, uh, be made after, 1918, after uh, 1918 and after. And you've got it right in here. VDB. Okay. Are we seeing this? Let's try home. Yeah. Okay, so you see, it's gone. How does it do that? There's your VDB. It's got a VDB. It can't be, cannot be a 1915. You come over here, the mint mark is wrong. Cannot be a 1915S. Okay, the one is wrong. Cannot be a 1915. That's a 1945S is what that is. Good looking fellow. And the coin, if it weren't for this damage and this damage and... That big screw up on the bottom might pass where I give it, you know, lower XF or high end VF. I think the face details are a bit weak for VF, uh, but the reverse look pretty strong. You know, you got some good shape here, but uh, VF 35 to XF 40. And then you get to count for this debris and stuff. You know, how much is 1915S in this kind of shape? Where's, uh, where is it? Okay, 1915S. In this kind of shape, I give it, uh, you know, twenty six to twenty six to fifty eight dollars. That's why he's got this thing listed the way it is. You know, it looks like a nice fifteen S. 
In VF, it's a $25 bill. But in 1945, uh, you're looking at 20 cents. You know, that'd be a 20 cent coin. And you're going to turn that into 20 bucks. Hey, anybody with a, an X-Acto knife can do this. So you got to watch them because they will, they will hit you sometimes. Go back through all your, uh, you know, your early teens. Nope, that's not it. You can go back through all your early teens and decide, you know, is this genuine or has it been altered? And uh, look at the one, the mint mark, letters under the shoulders. Those are going to be your three big ones. Uh, verify all three, you got it made. But this has been, this is no good. It's a darn shame. I'm going to go back to the chat here. There we go. Put this up. There. Now, this is what I see when I'm doing a stream. There's young mugs. I didn't have your t-shirt on. I just grabbed this old, rel this smelly thing. Uh, I was just doing my thing and the fella said, hey, what's the grade on this? It's no good, baby. So hopefully I saved him from, uh, you know, making a $25 investment that's going to pay off nothing. And maybe I can save you guys too. Uh, the, the S on that 15, where to go? The S on that boy, that's a, that's a trumpet tail, 1945 S. Uh, you got two different mint marks used in 1945. Here we go. You have the balsa riff which is here, and the trumpet tail, which is there. And let's find that again. Okay, it's got a bit of a balsa riff on there. Yeah. But it's been, you know, kind of flattened over time. But it ain't the, uh, it's not the 1915 mint mark. Joe's still at work. Quit your job, Joe. It's a lot more fun when you don't have to work for a living. Believe me. And it's a scary to pay the bills, but, well, what the heck, if life's not an adventure, what's the point? Brad says, that's a darn shame, ain't it? Uh, I've been fooled. You know, you look at it, hey, it looks real good. And if you don't have a loop to get in close, you know, you really want to, you know, get one of these, put it on there, and, and know your coins, because it's that knowledge that's going to make or break a good investment. Uh, but I got to call, uh, I got to get, get a hold of this fellow. And say, dude, your coin is a fake. Because, well, there's reputations at stake. Some people I just report to eBay. But this guy's got a lot of good stuff. So I usually uh, get a hold of him and say, hey, what's going on here? Oh, and I can pause this. And that might help some speed on your end. What's going on here in the chat? Beth Cutting, have you heard from Bob Edge? I do not know Bob Edge. There's Ray. Ray, uh, I'll have to check the email. I kind of, Monday, I usually just sloth. Uh, I, I let entropy take over my life and, and don't usually get anything done on Mondays. Because, uh, you know, I get the Friday night show, the Saturday class, the Sunday show. Oh, I'm wore out. Uh, but I do have a lot of shipping I got to get done. So I always run to the store, you know, pick up some bread, some milk. That sort of thing. So I'll, I'll check those emails. I believe I, I have one for you. You asked about uh, uh, holders, I believe. I have some on order. They're going to be a little bit. So when they come in, I'll get you an invoice. And, uh, and it will be good. Gone Fishing says, hi, all. Good luck always. I PM'd emailed. Guess I'll drop him a card. Yeah. Call him up. Well, anyway, that's what I wanted to get through. Was... uh. The stuff you find. Jeez, now I got a 14S, an 09S, and a 15S to add to that collection. Stay on your toes, folks. There are people looking to get your money and give you nothing for it. Okay, I'm going to take off. You guys stay groovy. And if you're not where I am, stay warm. Okay, goodbye, goodbye folks. Now, how do I end this?